Well, here's another D-Lab video. I'm pretty angry that I didn't get to do it. Why does he always get to do it? Welcome to D-Lab Electronics. This is part two of the RCA Model 110K repair. And in this video, I'm going to put new capacitors in the RCA. I just got them in. We got a new filter cap and we have all the coupling caps that are required to make that radio healthy again. But in this video, I'm also going to introduce you guys to a new character. There he is right there. You may think, well, that's just another angry bird. But no, this guy is Brutus. And Brutus is more than an angry bird. He's a very angry bird. Now, to install capacitors, you really don't have to be an electronic technician. You pretty much have to go in there and say, here's the value of the caps. And I'm going to mechanically install these new ones. You don't have to test anything. You just have to put them in. Well, I've got a shop in my basement. I do the same thing you do, D-Lab, but I'm not going to help you out. It's yours. You're the electronic technician. Why don't you just do it? So pretty much at this point, I give up. I tried, but you know what? Nobody needs a hater in the mix. So I have a beautiful CE distribution filter capacitor and bags of new caps to change those cathode bypass plus coupling caps with. So I'm going to flip her upside down, show you the mess we got to deal with. We'll swap these out. Shouldn't take that long. To assist you with this task, I'd highly recommend that you open up the RCA 110K schematic, which is free on nostalgiaair.org. Okay, so you got all this nice information. The full schematic is here, and you're definitely going to need it when you get into those paper caps, because you're going to find that most of those caps are so dirty, and the ink has actually wore off of the caps, so you can't read them anymore. So you will have to reference this, all right? Because you sure don't want to get in there and put in the incorrect caps and cause more problems with the radio. Here we are, bottom side, task in hand. All these caps are coming out. And you can see they're old, they're nasty, they've been hot. They all have to come out. There's no reason to test these guys, just change them. But first, we're going to start with the main filter capacitor, which is also a crispy critter. So this guy needs to come out first because it is actually the most major part of the task. And the rest of these go pretty quick. So we're going to start out with the main filter cap. And what I do is I come in here with a pair of clippers and I cut these leads right off the cap. All right, That leaves these leads and resistors and everything where they were. And that leaves me a road map. All four leads are disconnected from the cap. Now I'm going to remove the capacitor, get the new one in place, and get her wired up. The new filter cap's in place, so I'm going to take the big old unger, get the grounds soldered up. The unger is the only way to go. This guy can transfer heat big time. The tip is about uh, 1,000 degrees. So here's the new filter cap installed. Now this new filter cap has three sections, whereas the old one had four. Okay, I elected to use a three section because they are a little less expensive. Plus, the fourth section that's not used here was actually a 25 microfarad cap at about 25 volts, and that went to the cathode of the four output tubes. So I decided to use a standalone cap for that. Now it's time to change out all these old ugly wax caps. I'm going with this style capacitor which I have great luck with and as you can see physically it's much smaller than these so it's going to kind of clean things up. The other thing I need to point out if you look right down in here you see all that? All that shrapnel down there? That is insulation that is falling off these wires. This is kind of common in these old radios. I'm going to address that later. So you can see these caps are kind of buried under other wires. 
So you got to pretty much cut the leads, push them out of the way. The new one will go right in there. Lots of room. So the capacitor change out is doing well. You can see I've got most of them in. Doing the last one, which is trapped between the wafers on this band switch. I was able to cut this wire off, but I can't get to the wire that's buried under there. So when you have this circumstance, rather than trying to get some cutters in there and damaging things, just grab a hold of this guy and start turning him. Okay. Just keep on a turning that cap. And eventually, you'll fatigue that lead and she'll come out. So I had to get a pair of pliers so I could get that guy spinning. And you can see what's left of it right there. So now I can remove that and I'll have full access to that lead. So here's our pile of bad capacitors. And there is one open resistor that I found which went to that filter cap. Most of these caps, about four of them, was wide open. And there were coupling caps, so that was killing the signal in the radio. Alright, so here it is. As you can see, it's playing. I'm just running that off a jumper wire, about a foot and a half long. So it appears to be very sensitive. My next step is to go through, check all the resistors, change out the ones that are way out of tolerance, and then I've got to fix that old wiring that's all crusty and falling apart. But it's really coming along nicely. I'm very happy with it so far. So here's the RCA picking up international short wave on a foot and a half piece of wire. So I'd say she's working pretty good. So the restoration is coming along well. As you can see, when you get in these radios, they're full of those old wax, nasty looking capacitors. You just change them. You don't think about it. Change them out and then change that main filter capacitor because that old cap has been in there since 1940, okay? And if it fails, it can damage your power transformer. It could damage the speaker and it can obviously damage other components in the radio. So change it out. Then I have to go through and check the tubes because I haven't done that yet. I'm sure there's a lot of other resistors that are out of tolerance and that wiring is all crusty and falling apart. I need to address that too. And I'll show some follow-up videos when we get to that point. So I hope you enjoyed the video and there's more to come from D-Lab Electronics restoring the old vintage radios and amplifiers. Why can't I work on radios? That makes me really angry, D-Lab. Will somebody get him out of here? Ratchin' Fretchin' D-Lab Nation.